So thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, my name is Jerome McFarland. I'm from the marketing team at Diablo Technologies. Uh, today we'll be talking to you about our memory channel storage technology and the advantages and capabilities that memory channel storage brings in virtualized applications. I'm also joined by my colleague Ricky Trigallo from Diablo and also a special guest, uh, Daniel Beveridge from VMware. So I'll begin by giving a brief overview of Diablo as a company and memory channel storage technology at a high level, and then I'll transition over to Ricky and Daniel, and they'll take you through a deeper dive in technology and specifics with regard to virtualization. So just to get started, a little bit about Diablo's background. So Diablo has been around for about 10 years, has a long history designing uh, memory subsystems, high-performance memory subsystems, and around three years ago, uh, they had this idea for a new technology that we're calling memory channel storage, and that's what we're going to be going through today. And to develop that technology, Diablo established some key partnerships with uh, OEMs, ISVs, as well, and solution providers. Uh, one of the critical partnerships that we have is with SanDisk. Uh, SanDisk and Diablo have been working together very closely to bring the solution to market. And as I go into the product details, I'll talk a little bit about you know, what Diablo brings to the table and what SanDisk brings to the table. But that's a key partnership for us. Another key one is with IBM. Uh, they've been our lead OEM all along. It's been a long, fruitful relationship. IBM has helped us make sure that you know, we include the proper features and management capabilities and kind of check all the check boxes, dot all the I's and cross all the T's to make sure that the product, when it's rolled out to the end customer, has everything that it needs. So establishing that ecosystem of partners, uh, OEMs, and the ISVs we're working with, like VMware, has been very critical and something that Diablo's been putting a lot of time and effort towards. So what is memory channel storage? So just at the high level, you can think of memory channel storage essentially as a way to deploy flash within the memory subsystem. So if you think about the way flash storage technologies have been deployed historically, traditionally the storage is accessed via the I.O. subsystem across the PCIe bus. And if it's a SAT or a SAS interface SSD, then you'd also have an HBA that you're going through. So what we're doing with memory channel storage is we're giving you a way to access flash without this trip through the I.O. subsystem. So the flash remains directly within the memory subsystem in the NUMA architecture when utilizing Diablo's memory channel storage technology. And what this brings from an advantage perspective is lower latencies because you're as close to the CPU as possible when you're on the memory subsystem. It also brings more deterministic latency because you're now leveraging the DDR bus, which is the most high performance, most parallel bus in the entire system. So that bus is very deterministic. You know, it's used to communicate with DRAM, so it's very rigid protocol with very closely timed transactions. So we're leveraging that same deterministic bus to interface with Flash. So we benefit from that determinism as well. And the third thing is there's no trade-off between the latency and the throughput. So with traditional storage solutions that go across the PCIe interface, traditionally you'll have large amount of Flash storage behind a monolithic ASIC uh, Flash controller. So you can get relatively low latencies when the I.O. throughput is low, but when the I.O. throughput becomes high, that single ASIC has to do a lot of management to deal with all that flash, garbage collection, wear leveling, et cetera. So those management tasks can overload the ASIC. So when the I.O. throughput becomes high, the latencies can spike. So you won't be able to get those low latencies while you're having high throughput. With memory channel storage technology, you can actually get both at the same time because, again, we're leveraging the parallelism of the memory subsystem. So it's a very distributed high-performance architecture. So the first generation of memory channel storage is called the Carbon Architecture. That's our DDR3 interface product. And we call it the memory channel storage RDK from Diablo's perspective. That's a reference design kit. So that's what we provide uh, as Diablo. It's the ASIC, the drivers, the software to enable it from an IP perspective. Then we partner with strategic partners like SanDisk to productize the solution, add the flash subsystem, add the additional technologies to make it robust to enterprise grade, manufacture it, and bring it to market. So the Carbon One architecture, again, it's DDR3 interface. Uh, to the host, it presents as a block device. So it can be managed just like any existing storage devices in the system. Any pre-existing solid state drive or hard disk drive, it'll show up just the same way. So any rating, caching, storage aggregation, storage pooling, software layers that you may have, those can continue unchanged. No software level changes are required. Just a quick question, sure. can our CPUs see that as storage instead of memory? So it shows up as a storage device because you have to use an enabled system. So there's a UEFI change that's required. And that's why when you look at IBM and Supermicro and Huawei, the OEMs that we're supporting, there are certain models that are supported for memory channel storage. And that's because those models have the correct BIOS or UEFI so that when the system comes up, it knows not to do memory tests. It you knows not just slot it in an HP server, but you would be able to change the BIOS to do that. 
Yes, you would. The, the model that we're rolling it out, though, is that you, know, you would buy it directly from an OEM with an enabled system, yeah, so. No, I get that. I'm just looking from the technology perspective. Yeah, exactly. it's not, it doesn't slot in a standard motherboard with the standard CPUs, but you could change any motherboard to do that. Exactly, x86, you could update the BIOS to support memory channel storage. You mentioned uh, the NUMA topology. Can you handle to, to make a CPU really direct connected to the right storage? Yeah, so you, you can have CPU affinity. Uh, you can do all the kind of NUMA things that you would normally do. So it goes, as you deploy the product, you deploy it across memory controllers, and you can deploy it across CPUs as well. There's best practices, of course, to maintain the best performance. But yes, all the NUMA aware stuff is there. Okay, which brings another question. What stage of the BIOS load is it presented? Can I boot from this? So you, you could boot. I mean, it's a storage device. So and it is presented at early on in the BIOS loading chain. Yeah, it's presented early on. Uh, it, it could be bootable. Uh, I don't believe the driver today is supporting bootability. But that's definitely something that we can support and probably will support. So, yeah. Yeah, at least in ES6, you cannot, it's not bootable drive. I figured that would be the case for ESX, yeah. but yeah. So I think we covered everything. Oh, the one other thing that I would mention here is that it's a fully self-contained module. There are some other solutions, and I'll actually pass this around so you can kind of take a look at the physical device. There are some other solutions that are not DRAM that are also doing storage-like functions that fit into the same DDR3 physical form factor. Some of them are taking power from the uh, DDR interface, but not actually passing data across it. So there are other technologies that kind of look the same, but aren't the same. I just want to make the point that all the data and all the power for memory channel storage devices comes through the DDR3 bus. There's no external connectors required. There's no additional you know, connections or anything. A question. Sure. The, I don't quite get it then, I don't think. Does it still talk SCSI? Yes. Yes. Yeah, there, there is no API from the application. Application sees it as a storage device, so it talks SCSI. And there is no change in the motherboard because the memory channel, memory controller will see it as a DIMM. Yeah. So it's the only change is the UFI code, so yeah. it's a software code in the BIOS. Okay. All right. So a little bit of background about kind of Diablo and sort of how we roll the product out to market. So I alluded to this a little bit earlier. So what Diablo provides is what we call the memory channel storage RDK. Again, that's the reference design kit. So the way we roll that out is it's a fully formed, uh, you could say, reference implementation of an end product. And then we work with our partners, like SanDisk, to actually develop the full product that will roll out to the market. We also, of course, work directly with OEMs like IBM, Supermicro, and Huawei to ensure that, you know, we get memory channel storage qualified, and we have all the appropriate hooks for their management suites, et cetera. And then we work with strategic ISPs, like VMware, to ensure that we're helping memory channel storage be leveraged to its best capability at the software level. Diablo also works directly with the end customers uh, to basically make sure they have a good experience and to make sure that you know, we're including for future products as well any capabilities that are application specific or use case specific. Now, from the product specifics perspective, there are two memory channel storage based products on the market today. One of them is called the IBM X Flash DIMM, the other is called the SanDisk Ultra DIMM. And again, as we've been mentioning before, these are essentially managed just like any other solid state drive. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, today they come in 200 gigabyte and 400 gigabyte capacities for a single module, but the way you would deploy these devices in a system is you always have multiple modules in parallel. So four devices or eight devices in a system seems to be a good sweet spot for customers from the performance and capacity perspective. So if you think about four uh, 400 gig devices is a 1.6 terabyte flash solution, eight 400 gigs is a 3.2 terabyte. So it gives a nice density of flash and performance at a level that customers haven't seen before from flash devices with regard to latency and with regard to the throughput they were able to scale to. So what does it do with regards to your memory requirements in a system then? So as far as population rules and memory bus speeds and all those things go, it behaves just like any other RDIM in the system. So if you say move from 2 DPC to 3 DPC, and that requires a memory uh, subsystem to go from 1600 to 1333 or 1066 or whatever it does, it'll do it the exact same way. Electrically, it shows up like an RDIM. But I mean, um, let's say you would normally buy a server and just fill all of the DIM slots with normal RAM you put something like this in that's going to behave more like RAM, but as an I.O. device, as a storage device, as you start taking up slots, you're obviously, you've got less memory slots then. 
but do you need less memory slots because of the way that this performs? So what most customers tell us is that they're actually shipping their systems today with many memory slots free. So they've actually been telling us that, and it's not really a surprise that the PCIe slots are very valued real estate because lots of things need to utilize a PCIe bus, you know, Ethernet and lots of other things. And they said memory slots is actually real estate they'd love to leverage for storage. So they're telling us today they're not really you know, they're not using, so there's no trade-off between getting rid of DRAM and putting in flash storage. But kind of to your point, in some cases, yes, you know, some customers, they end up over-designing with more DRAM than is strictly necessary to basically compensate for spikes or peak situations where the performance of whatever application it is can't go out of bounds in this sort of, you know, corner case. So additional DRAM is the way to get around it. If you have a high-performance storage device in those cases where maybe you're swapping to storage, now the delta performance, where maybe it was like this with traditional storage devices and maybe it becomes like this with memory channel storage, if that delta doesn't affect the user experience, then at that point you could have less DRAM in your system. But it's really application kind of solution dependent. So when, um, if you have um, an HP Dell server, whatever one, uh, or Intel motherboard, if you fill up the slots, the speed goes down, right? How does this affect it? Do you put this on the third channel? Does this affect that? Does it go into that slower speed for the memory because you use one more slot or not? So it, it, form, it follows the standard population rules if you're putting in DRAM in the system. So it's nothing special. So if a system... You are fitting on that slot and it yes. will take that yes. into account and it will slow down the speed yes. of, the, of the memory. It will behave the same way as if it was a DRAM module that you're adding. Makes yep. sense. Just ask me. Yep. No problem. So the one other thing I'll mention on this slide is that... Uh, you know, again, through the collaboration with SanDisk, this product has enterprise level endurance. Uh, if you're familiar with, you know, different types of NAND flash, there's MLC, EMLC, SLC, et cetera. Uh, we're using standard 19 nanometer MLC, so that's kind of commercial grade, most cost effective NAND flash, but we're actually getting more EMLC-like endurance. And that's through the collaboration with SanDisk because they provide the flash and the NAND controllers and their Guardian technology enables you to get the most endurance out of standard flash. So we're actually getting 10 drive rights per day uh, over the course of five years for, for these devices. So very, very good level of endurance. And from a management perspective, we support all the standard management uh, protocols and interfaces like smart monitoring technology for health, et cetera. Is there anything that you can share with us that explains how you can get near EMLC um, right endurance on the standard MLC. Yeah, so actually, and why wouldn't SanDisk do that on all yeah. their? <laughs> well, yeah, that's. I mean, it's it, the next it, question, it sound, right? It sounds great, but so SanDisk actually does have information on their website about the Guardian technology and the different phases and things that they do within so Guardian. Yeah, you can if you look for Guardian technology. Yeah, they have, and actually, I believe in the uh, previous in their storage field day session that they did not too long ago. There was a SanDisk presentation. They went into some depth about Guardian technology and how it works and how they enhance the endurance of the flash.